Welcome to another Unwinding with Fiber and Fabric, and Happy Halloween for any people out there that are celebrating Halloween. As you notice, I have some Halloween and autumn de um, decoration behind me. It's been a full month since I have um, posted uh, a video. Um, it was not an intended month vacation, and I don't really think you would call it a vacation <laughs> since I've been crafting up a storm, posting things on Instagram as I have made them, and actually recording a bunch of extra footage that I wanted to share. The problem came in that in order to edit the short videos that I wanted to share, it required me to work in my office, and I have two young kittens who, even when they're taking naps, they're only taking naps a room away. <sighs> so, editing video, even recording video, um, it takes a little bit more planning than it did before the beginning of September when we adopted these two kittens. They have been a joy to our household. Um, our old kittens do not agree with us quite yet but they are at least getting to a point where they do find the antics of small kittens to be interesting to watch if nothing else <laughs> so my house is still a bit of chaos my routine is completely thrown um up in the air and I'm not really sure where it's all going to settle but i have been getting a lot of crafting work done Mainly because um, the room that I do most of my sewing, etc., is far enough away from the kittens that um, when the kittens are put in their secure, comfortable space, they don't hear me and therefore they don't <laughs> beg for their, my attention. <sighs> I only have two children, and while I've always had cats, two children definitely seem to have been less demanding of my time than the four cats that I'm currently living with. When my husband is home, I will admit it is a little bit better because the kittens will go and hang out with him. <laughs> so, this isn't a vlog on my cats, <laughs> but I wanted to share with you why I haven't um, recorded a video in the last 30 plus days. But, let's get on to the stuff that I have been doing. During this time, we have um, redone a, a patio um, that, that comes off of our garage. We put an, um, kind of a metal awning over it so that it is um, a little more covered area. It's great for um, winter um, storage of some of the, the um, things that we need for the yard. <sighs> that was a big project. The deck that was in place was old and it was um, warping and rotting, so we have, have fixed that all up. We went for a, a drive in the country. Um, I will actually be sharing a short video um, on my um, here on um, YouTube as a short and also probably on Instagram and Facebook of our drive in the country. We did manage to go and see some fall color. Oh, and it was wonderful. <sighs> Let's see. We also, um, oh yes, I have another short video that I will be um, sharing. We had a log jam at our bridge to our property and the county came out and cleared um, the log jam because while we are in the ca county, technically we're right next to municipality and um, and it, it is really just a stone's throw down the creek, the municipality. So um, the log jam is an issue for the creek and the county as much as it's also a threat to our bridge. But it was we had we had a bunch of um, bad weather in the early part of spring that brought down some large trees. And unfortunately, not everyone is very conscientious about clearing away their down trees along their property lines um, where the creek is. And so they all kind of got backed up at our bridge. And it was oh, actually a wonderful, fun experience to watch them as they, as they brought out the big machinery and cleared the bridge. So I have a short video I'll be sharing for that. So let's see, we've had construction, we cleared out a log jam, I've gone on um, a scenic drive, I have short video of that. I also have a short video 
one of the days that I was out taking in some of the early, early fall color, I had a meeting with um, one of my deer that live in my backyard. And it was just, it, it was a, it was a quiet, um, just an, a, a, just a wonderful little encounter. And thank goodness for a really great zoom on cameras because it looks like I was a lot closer to the deer than I actually was. Um, but it, it's just a little, a little peek into what I see every day in my backyard. Um, and I was so happy to catch it on, on, um, video. So take a look out for my short videos. Um, hold on a second. My computer was giving me a little beep. Let's get that out of the way. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so take a, a moment and check out my short videos that will be posted um, either right after this video is uploaded or um, within the next couple days. Keep an eye out for those. Now, on to the projects. As you see, I have a witch behind me. That is an In the Hoop Embroidery Project by Creative Kiwi that I just um, tried out this week. I do not have an embroidery hoop that big. I love Creative Kiwi Embroidery Designs. She, um, Kay, creates the most wonderful puzzle piece in the hoop um, projects that each piece is done in the, the, the hoop and then it's and then the previous pieces are added to the next piece as it's stitched. She has fabulous videos. Oh my goodness. I'll put a link to that embroidery design and video um, in the description below. I just, no promotion here. I just, I love her designs. I love um, her red work that she does. Um, I just love the whimsy of her designs. That's the first time I've done one of her uh, multi-hoop projects, and I loved it. Her video, just step-by-step, step walks me through it. So even though it took me a couple days to do it because I had interruptions, I could pause the video, come back, continue to watch the video step-by-step. Step. She walked me through how to make that wonderful, um, the wonderful witch behind me. So, um, oh, so for people who, um, well, actually I don't, I wasn't doing videos when I made this little guy. This little guy is my little booby. <laughs> Boo, <laughs> little bee. So I made him up a number of years ago. I have instructions for a bunch of crochet, simple crochet spat patterns, um, on my blog. I'll put a link, um, in the description below showing off some of those. So what else have I been doing? So in addition to the witch, you also see behind me, uh, welcome to our home sign. I just finished that this week and I, I decided I needed to make it because as you see, I'm not in my normal recording space. As I said in my last video, because of the kittens having an, you know, are inhabiting the room that I was doing my, my previous recording in, I've taken to this space. So when I sat the camera down to do some test um, footage, I realized that that area was a little visually empty and we can't have empty space <laughs> in a crafting home. So I made that um, little embroidery design, a uh, little quilt and hand quilted it um, so that we would have it there. So welcome to my home. Additionally, some of the other fun things I've been doing is that Shetland that I have been carding or I've been spinning to make another of my capelets. I finally have it all carded up, um, ready to spin. So I suspect as soon as I get this video done, I'll probably sit down at one of the wheels and continue to spin up this because now that it is carded, oh, I really can't wait to dig in and just get it spun. It's so soft. It's so wonderful. So there is my Shetland finally carded. Um, half of the Shetland I was able to spin without carding, just picking it open. But half of it was so fine and so crimpy that it was just better to go ahead and card it. And so that's what I've done. So that's been keeping me busy. Uh, for anybody who's been following my Instagram, you will know that I finished my second capelet, very fall color, um, and I posted photos of it, um, and oops, it's very difficult in a camera to, 
ah, there we go, to put it on correctly. There. So I have my second capelet finished, um, my leftover, um, and, and, um, orphan skeins. There we go. Leftover and orphan skein capelet is finished. It's wonderful for fall. We've had just a little bit of, um, cold weather. So I, but I haven't had a chance to wear this one. I have been still wearing my other capelet all the time. Every morning when it's chilly, I'm wearing it. I wear it when I go out. It is so perfect. Just warm enough to keep the chill off, but not too warm. Um, this one's a little bit warmer, and so I think I'll be waiting until there is a slightly bigger dip in the afternoon temperatures for this one to come to come out and, and be worn. Um, but I have to say, for anyone who understands the temperature regulation of women of a certain age, my other capelet, which is really thin, but is a wonderful wool, is perfect. My husband's like, oh, I think you'll need a coat today. It is kind of cold outside. <laughs> I'll take the coat in the car in case, but um, for the most part, it's really nice to have something that keeps the heat in, but also breathes and makes it so I'm not overheated. So capelets, definitely still um, forefront of my mind and my projects. But the thing that's been keeping me most occupied during this time in which I've been trying to teach two small kittens that know the ironing board is not somewhere you play on. You're not supposed to play with cables. We have a small Christmas tree that we have put up without ornaments yet to try to get the kittens to understand that this is not something to climb on, to chew, to play with. <sighs> if we can have at least some <laughs> training for these young kittens ahead of the time, ahead of the Christmas season, I figure we'll be a little bit better off. But it has been a challenge. Um, it means that the projects that I'm doing, whatever I'm doing, I have to stay very focused on catching them before. Yes, I have an iron that will shut off if it hasn't been used in a certain amount of time. This is a good thing. I was working on a project yesterday. In fact, I think I was finishing this project yesterday. And all of a sudden I turned around and one of the young kittens, Meatball, he is licking the iron soul plate. Fortunately, I knew that the iron had clicked off earlier. <sighs> yes. <sighs> I do not know if I will survive. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking other than I do know this. Life is not boring. Life is not a monotonous day after day. I have forgotten to turn off all of the devices around me. <laughs> let me let me quickly turn off the sound on this one. <laughs> so, uh, see, whether it is cats or kids or husbands, finding the time to make a little vlog is not always the easiest, but it is a joy. I do not, for one moment, regret having the chaos in my life. I just at times need some quiet space and my husband, he understands that. And when he comes home, he does his very best to let me have some quiet moments to decompress. But as I was saying, the projects that I've been doing while I've had the craziness of extra cats, um, learning how to adjust my home, the projects that I've been doing are ones that I can do. inspire me, try something new, challenge a uh, new technique, but are projects that can be finished in a certain amount of time, much like the witch. I can segment them if I have to. I can stop a machine and return to it. So that's what I've been doing. And so I have been, and I've been participating in um, a weekly challenge that embroidery library in machine embroidery designs um, has been doing and every week every month they're having a different theme and the run-up to Christmas and I've been participating in that and this past month has been Christmas stockings 
And this actually gave me another really great opportunity to try something I hadn't tried before. Creative Kiwi, the designer of The Witch, had made an in-the-hoop Christmas stocking. Now, I've learned how to make Christmas stockings for years. I know how to make them lined. I know how to make them quick and easy. That's never been a problem. But the idea of being able to do everything in the hoop, it intrigued me. So, the first one I did, <laughs> never having done this specific project, but following along with her video, and again, I'll put links in the description below, I wanted, I decided to use Creative Kiwi's In The Hoop stocking, but put an embroidery library design on it so that the design would be part of the weekly challenge. And the first one I did, I finally got to use this wonderful um, embroidery design that I got from Embroidery Library last last year, I believe it was. And I was trying to think, what do I want um, up here on the top? I wanted some words, and I thought that was the perfect, the perfect phrase. So joyful, because that is exactly how I feel when I'm in my crafting zone. So joyful. And with a little fun of doing, changing the spelling, it works great. So this stocking is the first one that I did. And it's actually going to go into my sewing room because I think now that I have an empty nest of children, <laughs> a very chaotic nest of cats, now that I have an empty nest of children, I'm thinking that I'll put the stocking in there. And then maybe through the month of December, I will add notions trinkets, maybe new pair of scissors to this as a gift to myself in my little space. Um, I, to have to have just something, my own little special moment in time. My husband thinks it's a great idea. My children think it's a great idea. So I made myself this small, and yes, this is very small. The stockings that I've made for my family are much larger, but this small little stocking is perfect for the sewing notions or um, maybe even a little fiber <laughs> for spinning, but something simple and sweet to go in my sewing space. So that's the first stocking that I made. Well, it's a whole month of making stockings, and the next challenge that they presented was to do embellishment. Well, I was inspired, whoops, let me show you. So let me do the red ones. I keep picking up the wrong, there. I love the red work. In this case, I've done the, this one as a white work. I will put a picture here because it'll be easier to show. I was inspired by some laser woodcut or paper cut designs that I was able to find on Embroidery Library's um, other, um, they have a paper craft wood craft, um, car cutting, cutting machine inspired um, page as well, um, company called Creative Genesis, I think it is. And I'll put a picture, as I said, here. I was inspired by the cardinal. I love the cardinals that we have in our backyard. And so that, there we go. Those were the first two. And it was lovely because I had these, this lace trim with beads that I was able to put out and some snowflakes and buttons. I have trims and stuff because, of course, for years now, when there has been a really serious sale, I will take advantage of the sale. And some of these trims come from when, um, years ago, the Walmart that was closest to where we lived in Colorado decided it was no longer going to carry fabrics and notions that had to be cut on demand. So they had a liquidation sale of all of their, um, uh, fabrics and notions, trims that had to actually be cut rather than prepackaged. So this gave me a wonderful opportunity to try out some, um, some trims and some embellishments. They're not heavily embellished because honestly, I kept finding the elegance of it to just be drawing. I was drawn to the elegance of the red work and the white work. So then I had those two, but then I also did I love snowman and snow. I love the blue and the white. So I made these guys as well. Um, my husband and I 
are both Frosty the Snowman fans. That was our Christmas um, favorite as a, as a, as children, and so we've actually over the years collected snowman trinkets and snowman things. So I just really loved being able to use those. Loved being able to use the fun buttons, little mitten buttons. So I made this set as well. I don't know where these stockings are going to be used. I do know though that this size of stocking is a wonderful, wonderful size of stocking. Let me turn that. There we go. Wonderful size of stocking. If you're going to give somebody a gift, if you're wanting to give them, uh, you know, just a, a get well, a feel good. I have been thinking of you. This is a wonderful size of stocking. It fits. It would fit a Toblerone candy bar in it beautifully. It would be great to give to um, friends who are knitters or um, spinners or anybody. They're just a little tiny gift inside because yes, I can put my hand in it, but it's not so big that you have to feel like you have to stuff it with lots of stuff. stuff. So I love these. These I think will end up being gift, gifted to people at some point. But <laughs> the final challenge of the stocking month that Embroidery Library had was to make stockings of different shapes. So all of these stockings are in the traditional stocking shape. And amazingly, I was actually thinking along the same lines because when I put my hand in here, I thought, wow, okay, you yeah. um, yeah, this is a little bit like a quilted mitten. <laughs> and I started thinking about the fact that a per friends had given me um, those, those oven mitts, the ov oven mitts that you use to take cookies out of the oven, or if you're a barbecuer, you like to have those kind of oven mitts. And I started thinking, well, I wonder if I could make an oven mitt in the hoop. Well, I did. <laughs> so using what I learned from doing the Creative Kiwi stocking, so definitely giving Creative Kiwi kudos and credit for the inspiration. Using what I learned from her designs, I digitized my own stocking in the hoop, or in this case, mitten. Now, this one has an embroidery library design on it. It is a design that I absolutely love. I'm always fascinated with the sound of not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. I love the way that sounds. I love what that invokes in us the night before Christmas. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. And so one of the things that I've started collecting is mouse oriented Christmas um, ornaments and designs because not a creature was stirring, not even the mouse. So it gave me an opportunity to use this design. If I were making this as a gift, I would put a design that was either not directional or I'd have it like this because it is a usable mitten. And <laughs> it can be used on either side. So one of the things that I will be working on in this upcoming week or weeks is what I'll probably end up doing is digitizing just a, a rectangle that will quilt the backing pieces for me that I would then apply in the hoop rather than just regular fabric. If I put some bat now the batting and stuff that I have in this and the 100% cotton all of this should handle taking a cookie sheet out of the oven. Um, it, it, it should be fine. I wouldn't necessarily want to use this side um, for it, but it, it should be fine. I have used 100% cottons for hot pads and things like that, and yeah, they, they work. Um, but if I wanted to make sure this was something that was much more insulated, much more safe for general use of people who may not know um, 
how to not burn themselves taking cookie sheets out of ovens, I'd probably use um, some of the insulated um, battings that you can buy for pot holders so that it's a little bit more um, dense, <laughs> I guess you could say. So, in the hoop oven mitt, I am really quite thrilled. But, as far as a Christmas stocking goes, oh my goodness, who wouldn't want to get a Christmas mitten full of wonderful, yummy stuff? And amazingly, using the same hoop as this guy, same hoop, my same size of hoop, it's my 8 by 11 hoop. This is actually um, easier to get the stuff in and out of. <laughs> this, this is a little tighter. <laughs> I think this is going to hold more than this would. So, that's what I've been up to in these last 30 days since I posted a video. Definitely having fun with autumn and with um, Halloween, but also continually coming up with ideas for Christmas. Um, I love making Christmas stuff. I love giving Christmas stuff. We've been working on a bunch of wood ornaments. I'll probably show more of that in the upcoming videos. My husband and I, um, excuse me, my husband and I have finally figured out a routine to do the computer part, to do the laser burning part, to, he has built a whole station for our machine that, um, that, that works this, and it's, it's been a joy. We are certainly on certain days when we're not out chopping down wood or going on a, um, a drive in the country <laughs> or watching the county come and empty out the creek. Um, we are definitely Santa and Mrs. Santa, or their elves at least, in our creative spaces. I wouldn't say that we have quiet lives in any way, shape, or form, but there is definitely some joy that is happening. Um, we're not, he is not retired, not fully retired, um, because he is working full, full time, but we moved here for our retirement years. We moved here for a healthier life, a uh, healthier pace. And I think we're accomplishing that as we definitely spend plenty of time creating together, um, being creative and, and trying to share it with others. So please, um, if you're on uh, Facebook or Instagram, go and follow, um, follow me at Pioneer Lady at Pithy Ponderings and um, keep an eye out for the different things that I post. I will be posting, I keep promising this, but I will be posting um, a pumpkin, a small pumpkin pie recipe soon. Um, smaller pie crust recipes, smaller pies, uh, making things so that they work when there's only two of you in the household. That is one of the things I've also been working on these last, um, this last month, these last two months. And I think I have finally... <laughs> got the pumpkin pie recipe down to what uh, to what I want to be able to write up the recipe and share that. I will, of course, when posting these, I will make them available on my pithyponderings.com blog, free to download for anybody who is interested. So keep an eye out for that. It is now only days away from Halloween, which means November is around the corner. It is time for food. It is time for baking. It's the time to fill the house full of wonderful spicy smells and um, savory and sweet treats as we have the run up to Thanksgiving and then <laughs> Christmas. Ah, so that is what I'm up to. I hope that you have had a wonderful October and that you are staying healthy and safe. And we will see you again soon on another Unwinding with Fiber and Fabric.